What's going on guys? Got my boy Wayne with me and today we are going to knock out a few episodes but this one in particular we wanted to lighten it up a little bit and talk about the Super Mario Brothers movie that just came out yesterday and uh, spoiler, spoiler alert it was fire. fire. Um, <laughs> absolutely fire and uh, if you have not seen it yet. It's worth seeing. Go ahead. This is the part where you go ahead and end the end the video. Go watch the movie and come back because we're going to get into the nitty gritty on this movie real quick, touching on some highlights and stuff. But if you were wondering, eh, you know, is the Super Mario Brothers movie going to be worth seeing in animation since they've already attempted to do this with the real version and a bunch of different renditions and cartoon over the years? The answer is yes. It absolutely kills all that. So turn the video off right now. Go get your tickets. Definitely go see it in 3D. And uh, and also, if you have the theaters that have the automatic recliners, mm -hmm. go to that mm -hmm. theater. Because I went to the Harkins, bro, thinking I was getting myself a recliner. I reserved my seats, and I went in that mug to some old church fold-out chairs. <laughs> let me just say, God humbled me real quick. It but, came out with the uh, crook in your neck. Dude, I was mad because I was just picturing laying on my back, popcorn in one side, gummy mm -hmm. snacks in the other, being a total kid. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it was it was not that. But nonetheless, the movie was awesome. Um, first thoughts, Wayne. Uh, what do you think about the movie? First off, hold on. <laughs> I hate to cut you off again, but we got to just say, I hit this full up a uh, couple of, uh, was it yesterday or day before? It was, uh, I think like it was yesterday day morning. Day before? No, it was, it, it was the day before the movie came out. Yeah. Yeah. I said, hey, so uh, I can't do Wednesday for the podcast this week because Super Mario Brothers is, is out tomorrow. Uh, you know, this Thursday, he's like, he says something along the lines of, oh, shoot, it's out. <laughs> Me too. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it went down. Yeah. No, I mean, honestly, Super Mario is like, it's funny because I when you said that you know you were taking your son, I was like, man, uh, to be honest, this ain't even for them. This is for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just the gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah, it's just for us. Like I, I recall um, that Christmas. I was probably a couple years. Super Nintendo had been out already, but my mom got me scrapped scrapped up some change and got me the um, Super Nintendo. I've been like hooked ever since. So I, I got still got switch. my Super Nintendo, bro. Yep. 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 Uh, did, who'd so. you go with? I went. With, I went with my wife. Yeah, just her and okay. I went. So what she like think I said, about it? It's for us. Oh, we both thought it was fire. Okay. We both thought okay. it was fire. Yep. Do yep. you have any upbringing with games and stuff like that? You know, she's more of a Sega person, but I think um, because of my my affinity with with Super Mario and Nintendo, she's kind of like adopted it. So we we're actually looking forward to going to. Um, Universal Studios and going to this, Ooh. yeah, Super Mario World. So that has to happen. So as long as they had some entry point into games, th yeah, that's you know that's all you need because mm -hmm. then they they understand they they know it's like to exactly bro. Yep. It's like just that exploration. And this is a time I hate saying phrases like that, but like you know, growing up as a kid with video games, it's not like now where you have like so many systems so many mm -hmm. choices yep. no when you were a kid you went outside you were outside all day long and if mm -hmm. you were inside that this is when vhs was real crazy hollywood video blockbuster you know so the home activities included you know hanging out doing nothing mm -hmm. maybe uh, hiding in your room if you had a game system, I know for me, my step pops had the game system out in the living room. You know, if you mm -hmm. wanted to play Super Nintendo, you had to go out in the living room. This, this wasn't, no, nah, you weren't getting your own system. And oh, eventually, yeah. you know, I got yeah, my it's own a family game. Yeah, it's a, it's the family yeah. entertainment system. Yeah. I imagine all of us <laughs> playing Nintendo, and uh, it got heated. But yeah. um, you know, it, it's a different time. You know, you only had like, you know, I remember back then it was like Super Nintendo or a Sega or mm -hmm. a Game Boy Color or mm -hmm. a Game Gear. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was it. And it wasn't like a plethora of games neither. Nah, everybody played like the same 1020 games. 
Yep. And um and we rented games. <laughs> yeah. And uh it, it like was just you. you would lock yourself into your own world when it came to the video games. You know, it was either like communal where you were playing with your family like something competitive or you were locked up in your room just letting hours and hours of your day consume you with with playing video games and trying to beat levels and hit quests and beat challenges and so Man, that was a a whole vibe. Yeah, uh, yes, Super sir. Mario Brothers. Man, yeah, I mean, a, original Mario. Mm -hmm. uh, we got uh, the Game Boy version. We got Yoshi's Island. Mm -hmm. um, Mario Kart. Oh, Mario Kart, Mario sixty four, Donkey Kong. I mean, it was just Doctor Mario. It. Man, there's just so much, bro. Let, yeah. Let's let, let's talk about the movie real quick, though, since we yeah. both thought it was super ill. And yeah. um, you know, I'm I think they nailed it for so many reasons. Um, let's talk about the animation. What would you call this animation style? Because I I refer to it like like a Pixar style. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is that like the official name for that style of animation? Where it's just it's like. It's clearly cartoon, but it's hyper realistic, almost like not claymation, but yeah. Um, Pixar is the only way to really define it, where you have these kind yeah. of like augmented reality realism. You know what I'm saying? Like surrealism. Yeah, Illumination, I believe, is the one who did it. So um, the same folks that did Despicable Me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I, I feel like you're probably a little more versed in the art side of it than I am. But mm -hmm. um, uh, we definitely thought it was very reminiscent to like Wreck It Ralph, mm -hmm. you know that that style. So, the movie yeah, Up, I, you know, up, yeah. pre pretty much Pixar. All Pixar movies are have this very Toy Story vibe, but yes. you know, with the technology upgrade. It get it gets seemingly realer and realer, even though it's fake modeling and stuff. It's so mm. well rendered that it feels like it feels like cartoons are real. Yes. Um, and so Pixar is kind of known. I think all Pixar films have that animation style. Mm. Um, but I I think they absolutely nailed it. It like I'm very big on color and aesthetic. Bro, it was like a bag of lucky charms that 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 movie. They they just had it Very wasn't just satisfying. that they Yeah, it, well it wasn't just that they got the color right. You know, oh, Mario's red, Luigi's green, whatever. No, it was like from the rainbows to the just color palette of the the mapping system to the characters. Mm. It just felt like you were in a, a surreal world like you got transported like there was never a dull screen moment where you could see everything on the screen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you could just look around the picture and be like, wow, there's so much color, so mm -hmm. much rendering going on here. And I was just like that. So that was like the first curb appeal was um, the trailer. Did you see the trailer? I did not. I hadn't seen anything up until actually watching the movie. Okay. So the trailer <laughs> definitely kind of grabbed the essence of the entire film and you were just like oh man if if the movie's anything like this trailer i uh, i will be super pleased Let, mm. let's go to the um levels how'd you like the levels yeah no like they captured everything that with the map um even in the very beginning when it showed how you know they were trying to rush to their first job that they got um mm. as plumbers and it was cool because it turns into that like 2D um, version of uh, you know transporting to to the job. Like every it was just right. everything was awesome. Rainbow Road was crazy. Um, Bowser's level was crazy. Like every everything was done really well. Bro, I love that they didn't. So two things. One, I love that they didn't just show it once. Mm -hmm. Cause you know sometimes they'll like do like an ode to mm -hmm. where they're kind of just reminiscing for half a second. Oh wow, they they brought it back to the old days. Nah, man, this movie had you're multiple. Bro, you're in the map the whole time. At mm -hmm. any point in time, it could manipulate into like hyper two D and then mm -hmm. go back out to to three D. Mm -hmm. Um, it, or, or go from side scroll to like open world. 
And that was so fire. I'm so glad they did that multiple times. Um, yes. It just, it, it almost made the movie 4D where it was like, it was like another, um, another sensory experience. Mm -hmm. And with the goggles, bro. Yeah. The goggles with mm -hmm. the, do not see this movie regularly. You got to do it. You got to get the glasses. My yeah. son my son asked me, he's like, why can't I actually touch Mario? You know, he was getting frustrated <laughs> because stuff was jumping out at his face. And he's like, but why can't I even touch this guy? <laughs> it's just like, I was like, bro, chill, man. Um, but yeah, they the fact that they did that just added a whole different experience to that movie because it, it not only was super accurate to, you know, if you played Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64, that's op open world, you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the jumping around, the ha ha ha, and da da da, yeah. you know. And, and then you got the 2D. Everyone remembers the regular Super Mario for regular Nintendo and Super Nintendo and mm -hmm. side scrolling. And um, and the fact that they incorporated that into that movie is like something no other movie's probably going to copy because it just wouldn't be relevant. But um, it, oh man, in a nutshell, this movie had everything to the T, bro. Including the music. Mm -hmm. Oh, the music was. Oh, bro, you had to be geeking on the music. Yeah. They went orchestral. Yeah. They went symphonic. They went mm -hmm. hyperpunk. They they uh had like uh, like just different renditions within the movie and then outside the movie. I mean, they had like the level music, you know, level one, level mm -hmm. two of of regular Mario. Mm -hmm. Um, they had orchestral. Bro, talk to me about the music. What stood out to you in that? Oh, the craziest one was when he had the um the wizard Bowser had the wizard sit next to him at the piano, and then they played the um oh what's the name of that level the dark level underground yeah, -na 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 -na. yeah that was so hard like <laughs> bro yeah, it had I mean, me dying when he was singing singing about Princess Peach oh yeah <laughs> I, you know it's funny because I I turned to my wife and I was like that's all Jack Black like that was all his idea. You know, but no, I mean so everything well from from the um, from Donkey Kong. It, it was it was all just really done well. It's almost too hard to like speak on one thing because it was constant. And then and then at the very end when they got the superstar, you know, and then it played yes. that music. Da, 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 da. And you know, the thing I I really appreciate is as as dope as the music is in in Mario games. It's also a, has a level of cheesiness, but right. I think the way that they really captured it, it was like far from cheesy. It was nostalgic, like you said. It had the different. Bro, it was, uh, it was an upgrade. Oh yeah, it, it wasn't just yeah. nostalgia. It was like, yeah. it it was. I mean, the, the thing is, is when you have something great, you want to see it evolve and grow. You mm -hmm. know, ten year old Wayne is not as cool as, you know, how old mm -hmm. are you? Thirty four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thirty. It's not as cool as thirty-four-year-old Wayne. It shouldn't be. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like as things evolve and things progress, you should be able to not only match the aesthetic and the feel and the vibe of what it was, but add something fresh. And this yeah. was like they did that, bro. They stayed true to the the. They didn't abandon the sermon notes. Yeah, they, <laughs> they had the script there. They said, okay. Music checks, uh, story plot check, da da da. Mm -hmm. And then once they had all that, then they go, okay, now how can we elevate the music, elevate yeah. the levels, elevate the plot, elevate the care? I mean, bro. Yeah. And like you said, they just you can't you couldn't critique it. It was so much going on. Right. There's no way you could have been somebody in that theater like, oh, I wish they would have, mm -hmm. you know, like done such. It was just, it was, Everything in the, well. and bro, the fact that they had a good plot too, mm -hmm. like the plot was simple. Mm -hmm. Talk about the star for a second. I was surprised, like, I'm thinking, oh man, the whole movie's leading up to like getting a star. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was going to be that dope, but it, it was like, yeah. okay, they get the star and, and they need the star because... If they don't have the star, Bowser's going to, you know, he's going to wax that butt. <laughs> like, like yeah, so right. they they needed the star so that they could 
defeat Bowser. So it made perfect sense once it all came to, cause I'm like, what? Okay. He's going to eat a star, give a thumbs up, a yoo-hoo. And then the movie's over. Like what's actually going to happen with the star. And they kind of used it in a way that I wasn't thinking about, right. which was that they actually got strong enough to defeat Bowser. And then, you know, speaking of items, you know, they had the boxes, you know, the mystery mm -hmm. boxes, they had the freaking flags, the flagpole where you grab down, and complete the level. They mm -hmm. had the mush, the big mushroom, the small mushroom, the flower power was ill. Mm -hmm. the know, she, just, she just grabs it to, to, to yeah. yeah, just to start a little mm -hmm. fire. I mean, dude, it was done it, really well. The, and yeah. the thing I loved about the storyline as well is, like you said, it was so simple. So in a way, they kind of made fun of the fact about how simple it was. So it was kind of like, yeah, the plot is to get the princess to marry me as Bowser. But if she doesn't, then I'll just have to destroy everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, and it, it, it was like almost tongue in cheek, but it's like, but no, that's the plot though, seriously. <laughs> and I felt yeah. like Toy Story had a similar vibe. Like yeah. that's what made it funny is, is it was so simple how they yeah. were going to, you know, get back to Andy and all this stuff. Yeah. And when, when they you know were against all odds they found some dumb way to to improvise and get the mm -hmm. job done yeah. um and, and i thought it was the one thing i thought was super creative was how you know it's a simple plot of them being in a quote-unquote real world and the super mario world is a alternate reality found through these magic tunnels right mm -hmm. but then when he comes back out um, you think the movie's going to resolve like a, a great movie that's similar to this is James and the Giant Peach. Did you ever yeah. see that? Yeah. So at the end of James and the Giant Peach, the alternate reality insects come into the real world and now choose to live in the real world with James at the very end. Right. Mm -hmm. In this case, they didn't all the way go back out into the Mushroom Kingdom but they lived two lives. So the resolve was like, okay, they're super famous out in the real world, but they love the alternate, they love the Mushroom Kingdom even mm -hmm. more. So it's almost like they're regular plumbers by day with their family and solving little podunk crimes in New York. And then mm -hmm. by, by night, they're ruling the Mushroom Kingdom with Peach and they're spending time with all of their... Um, you know, cartoon friends and stuff yeah. like that, which yeah. I just thought was like super cool. And um, it's a it perfect setup for a sequel. Oh my gosh. And then they had like it in a weird way. It reminded me of like a Lord of the Rings or something yeah. where it was like they conquered territories. And now it's like when Bowser comes back, what's going to be the next threat? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, let's, let's see. The last thing I just wanted to touch on was just the characters. Like they nailed every character, bro. Mm -hmm. The yeah. don the the Donkey Kong fight in and of itself was like gas. Like I'm like the Smash Brothers going. Oh, crazy. the Smash like they did dude, everything. <laughs> they literally they, they did not miss, bro. Mm -hmm. Just a plethora of characters and them all working together. And the way they did Toad's character was just super funny. Mm -hmm. um, it reminded me a lot of what Kevin Hart did on uh, the Rabbit. Um, oh yeah, on that movie. Yeah, it was, a, it was a different vibes completely, but just like the way they handled that role was just like mm -hmm. super creative. Um, he was basically this kind of chihuahua character that like would on the outside wanted to protect Peach and act like he was hard. But on the inside, like if you snapped your finger, he would go off running <laughs> like <laughs> it was. Oh, oh. And then the battle scene, bro, when <laughs> when they shot uh, what they shoot out at Bowser's camp. They shoot out. They, they shot something out at the camp. It did absolutely nothing. And they're like, should we proceed to show you the wrath of such and such? And he's like, yes, please. And then they just get annihilated. What was it? <laughs> was it the toads? Yeah. I'm, I'm yep. trying to think, what did they shoot? Was it? Um, Cause I know there was a couple of times when they, when like they consumed the wrong mushroom and made them smaller. Um, I'm talking about right at the beginning, the first scene when, when Bowser arrives at the Toad Land or whatever, yeah, it, it might have been the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm not sure. Mm. And all of the, uh, it wasn't Toads, was it? Mm. It wasn't a bunch of Toads. What were? 
I'm trying to think. What was the first fleet that they Is fought? It the Koopas? Well, the Koopas were his army, right? Right, right. The, there was <laughs> another character of like little guys that were all in an army formation to protect the camp. And the I forget. Penguins? Was it penguins? I forget, man, but that scene was just super funny. Like, yeah. it reminded me of um, uh, Frozen. Like, mm. just very, like, <laughs> like tough guy turned scared instantly. Like, it, it was just, bro, yeah. it was perfect, man. Like, it was totally a movie for kids, mm. but so well done that adults, like... They understood millennials. Bro, they, did, they, did, they handled they did the their assignment, bro. Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm going to have to run that back. And, and bro, when it comes out, I'm buying it. Like, no, okay. that's got to sit on my shelf. Yep. Just without question. Yep. All right, man. Well, hey, we, we covered a lot of stuff. Definitely go see that movie if you haven't. If, we, if you stayed along just to hear about it and we spoiled it for you, listen, man, if you spoiled me with the information, I would still go watch it. Like... <laughs> That movie was absolutely dope, um, and we encourage you guys to go out and take your family out. It's a family movie for sure, and honestly, I think it was one of the best. You know, we talk about movies like Zootopia and Ice Age and a lot of these types of films in, in Toy Story, and they're great films, but this just brought something to the table that was just like so just different. It was a whole different mm -hmm. vibe. They brought different stuff to the animation per, uh space and you would you just will be totally pleased on all levels that that you went to go see that film so definitely go check that out um we're gonna sign off so we can knock out a couple more of these episodes leave your comments below and let us know if you saw the movie what was your favorite scene and maybe what was your favorite thing of either nostalgia or special effect that they added into the movie that like you know, maybe talk about like what you came for initially and what you were surprised by. I want to know, man, because like we're Super Mario nerds, so I'm gonna respond to everybody's comment uh, on how y'all felt about it because it's one of those things I can barbershop talk on it for uh, forever, man. Because that that movie is just super dope, and I love. I still play that game to this day. I still got my Super Nintendo, still got my regular Nintendo, still got my modded uh, 3DS, like my. <laughs> It's just amazing, yeah. man. But we appreciate you guys. Until next time, peace.